you have your Bibles this morning, I want to invite you, if you would, to turn with me to Matthew chapter number 5. While you're turning there, I want to share a couple of thoughts about the importance of the Lord working and moving in our life. And I've got to, when I was praying there, Sophie was young. And then when I got done, she was, what, three years old now? Almost three. And I got to thinking, you know, and I understand the shuffle there, but kids grow up quick. They grow up quick. quick. And how important it is for us, not only as parents, but grandparents, as church members, to take the opportunities that God provides to us to set a proper example for those kids so that as they grow up and as the Holy Spirit of God speaks to their heart, they are submissive and receptive to his leadership and ultimately come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not sure exactly what plans God has for Sophie, but he's got a plan for her. And as long as she is submissive and as she grows, follows his leadership, she will accomplish that goal. But that also applies to the rest of us as well. God has a plan for each and every one of us in our lives. And it requires us to be submissive to his leadership and allow him to work and move in our life. And this passage of scripture found in Matthew chapter number 5. And I'm going to focus on verses 14 through 16 talking about the light here. But this is the description of what God's desire for every one of his children is or should be. And that is to radiate the love. To radiate the truth of their Lord and Savior Jesus. I was flipping channels the other night and I happened to find a program that dealt with the ministry of Billy Graham. I don't need to explain to you who Billy Graham is. God used him and blessed him in a great and mighty way. But one of the things that stuck out to me in his life and in his ministry, his desire was not for popularity to be known around the world. His desire was to radiate the love of Almighty God. And because of his humbleness, because he surrendered to the will of God in his life, because he acknowledged that it wasn't what he could do, but it's what God could do through him, God used him in a great and a mighty way. God's desire for you and I is to radiate and show forth and share the love of Jesus Christ with the world that we come in contact with. Let me remind you that this passage of Scripture, chapters 5 through 7, are what we oftentimes re refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. You go back to the end of chapter number 4, Jesus has gone around in the area of Syria and he, is, he has shared with people the gospel message and he has healed many sick. And as a result of that, there is a great group of people that begin to follow him because what they see in him is something that they had never seen before. The scriptures make it very clear that he wasn't like the rest of the religious leaders of that day. This guy was different. He had power not only in the words that he spoke but, but in the miracles that he worked. And he had a genuine interest in the needy that were round about him. He sought to impact and make their lives better. In chapter number 5, as he talks, in the first part of chapter number 5, we have what we refer to as the Beatitudes. And then he talks in verse number 13 about salt, that we are the salt of the earth. And the importance of salt at this time, not only was it a preservative, not only did they use it in cleansing, not only did it, did it add flavor to the things that they were eating, uh, it, it had many beneficial, be, benefit, 
many beneficial causes, and we are, we are likened to being the salt of the earth. But when he comes to chapter number 5, verse number 14, he refers to us as light. Now, I want to remind you, if you go back in Genesis, the very first thing that God created when he spoke the worlds into existence, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 3, he said, let there be light, and there was light. And he separated the light from the darkness. And light has, has, is symbolic of truth. Darkness is symbolic of evil. And what God is talking about here, he's talking about the light that will permeate darkness and will help lead and guide and direct people in the road that God would have them to go. I think it's very interesting when you go over to John chapter number 1 and verse number 4, it makes this statement about Jesus Christ. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. In John chapter number 8, verse number 12, it's Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So when he talks about light here, he's talking about the light that God gives. And I believe we experience that light when we come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us and reveals to us our need, and we come and we fall it on our knees before him, and we ask him to forgive our sins, and he breathes that new life into us, I believe that's the light that he's talking about that we are to share. Let me remind you, the light that is in you and the light that is in me is not something that we produce ourselves. It is the light of God that is in us that reflects from us. It's much like the sun and the moon, if you'll allow me to use that illustration. The moonlight that we see in the evening, especially during the full moon, that light of the moon is not, is, does not come from within. It's not its own. It is the reflected light of the sun that shines upon it. We, as well, are more, I would use the term rather than light, I would just use the terminology, we are lamps or lanterns. That God wants to shine through us His love and wants to show forth through us the mercy and grace and, and the, the desire He has for people to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in verse number 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hid. Now, let me just say this very clearly. The purpose of light is to benefit everyone. Would you agree with that? I mean, the, 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 the very essence of light, it dispels darkness. And when a light is turned on, it has, it has the purpose or the means or the desire to ben benefit everyone in the house or in that particular room. Jesus Christ, when he, when he saves us by faith and when the Holy Spirit of God indwells us and we've experienced that life which is the light, the intention of our Lord and Savior and the intention of our Heavenly Father is for us to let that light shine through us. And yes, it requires growing up in the things of God. It requires maturing and learning and, and being able to apply the biblical truths. But that's what the Holy Spirit's job is when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. He works in us and He moves in us and He grows us up and He brings us to a place that hopefully as we go through life and as we continue on our Christian walk, that Jesus Christ is a little clearer seen in us than he was when we were first saved. I know God's goal for us and his desire for us is to be conformed to the image of his Son. He wants us to look to, to, to be a vessel through which Jesus Christ and manifest himself. He wants us to act. He wants us to talk. He wants us to love. He wants us to encourage just like Jesus Christ. Have you ever wondered why when we get saved, God doesn't just take us home? Wouldn't that be nice? Some of you aren't sure where I'm going with this. It's okay. When we get saved and we, we have the promise of heaven because of faith and, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, have you ever wondered why God doesn't just take us home? The answer is, because this world is full of darkness. This world is full of sin. 
This world needs some lights to shine out there and show that there is hope, that there is an opportunity for sins to be forgiven and heaven to be home. That's why when Paul talks in Philippians chapter number 2, he tells us to shine as lights in the heaven. Let me tell you, those stars that are in the heaven are there for a purpose and a reason. And when you go back and you look at how, how mankind has used them, they use the stars to chart their progression and their direction and how they would get from point A to point B. There is a purpose to life. Purpose, the, the purpose for you and I in our life to shine forth that light of God is so that people can see the goodness, the mercy, and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let me just say it very clearly. If Jesus Christ can save me, he can save anyone. If we'll put faith and trust in him. And just as he says here, we are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill. Have you ever noticed when you're out driving and, and, and you're, going, you, you're going from point A to point B at night and, and you get ready to, to come up on a city, how that you can see the glow there and you know that there, that, that there is a town there or there are cities there? Have you ever noticed when you come in like into St. Louis in the middle of the night, the lights just illuminate and brighten up everything. And, and some, of those, some of it, it can be very beautiful at night by, when you drive by and see it. Lights have a purpose. And like a city set on a hill, we are to reflect God's love and we are to show them direction and guidance on how to get to the final destination, which is heaven. I want you to notice in verse number 15, it says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Now, I, I thought this was rather interesting. How many of you have been home and there was unexpected company come to the door? And maybe you were having an easy morning that morning and you hadn't yet picked up or washed the dirty dishes. And you get a knock on the door and there, that, it's that old honorary preacher. Hmm? Anybody, anybody besides me try to clean up the last minute before you answer the door? Huh? I got tickled when I was studying this, and it said one of the customs back in the old days in Israel that if you had unexpected company and you had a mess, you'd stick it in a corner and you'd set a bushel over it and try to hide it. It's kind of like our terminology is sweep it under the rug, right? But they would, they, would, they, would put a, they would put a container over to, to hide the clutter, if you would, so they weren't quite so embarrassed when the company would come in. When he makes a statement here, neither do men light a candle, what he's saying is the purpose of the light is not to be covered. If you put a, if you put a covering over a, a candle, if you put a, a, a covering over a, a lamp, in most cases it blocks out that light and it defeats the purpose for the light in the very beginning. You know what he's talking about when he says we don't put, a, we don't put a, a cover over a candle? Let me tell you something. When we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, that light is within us. That light is not our own, it's God's. But I'm telling you what we can do at times. We can allow the glass to get so dirty sometimes that the light doesn't shine quite as clearly as it should. We can allow things to come into our life that hinder it. And for all practical purposes, I'd, let me just use the terminology of Scripture, we can quench the Holy Spirit of God. And when we quench the Holy Spirit of God, our witness becomes a little less effective. And it's like putting a covering over that light. Jesus Christ saved us to be a testimony to those around about us. He saved us to live for Him and to show forth the love of God and to encourage people to come to a knowledge of the truth. If what we need to strive to do is to make sure that as that light is within us and as we try to grow and as we try to increase in our knowledge and understanding of the Lord that we allow nothing to come into our life that will hinder that light from shining in the way that God intended it to shine. Makes no sense to light a candle and then put a covering over the top of it. And child of God, it makes no sense for us who have put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ not to do everything within our power to let that light shine so that we can be as effective as we possibly can to family and friends and those around about us. Neither do men light a candle and put it on, under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now listen to verse number 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, I, listen to me, if you would, as I try to communicate this truth. The purpose for me shining forth the light of God 
is not so that people stand back and say, wow, look at him. The purpose for shining is not for self-acknowledgement or, 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 mo- or lifting ourselves up. The purpose for shining is for Jesus Christ to be lifted up. The purpose for shining is so that God gets the honor and glory. And what, I'm, what the purpose of, of, of shining is and the light of God is, is so that as we live and as we walk and as we allow the Holy Spirit of God to work in our life and minister through us, people, hopefully, they don't see us personally. Hopefully, they see Christ in us, which makes a great difference with those when, when the gospel is communicated. It's not about what I accomplish or what you accomplish. It's not about being recognized and thought well of. And I mean, we all want to be recognized and we all want to be thought well of. But my purpose for shining needs to be not about promoting self. It needs to be about magnifying my heavenly Father. And let me just remind you what Jesus said. If I be lifted up, and he's talking about himself, I will draw men and women, boys and girls, and And I'm telling you, when you have an opportunity to talk to that lost loved one in your family and you share with them God's love and you do it in the way that Jesus Christ ministered to people, it'll have a positive impact in life. When you're talking to that person who's in the hospital bed and they're going through difficult times and and they're discouraged and they're frustrated, when we sit there and with the help of the Holy Spirit speak the words that God lays upon our heart to encourage and bless them, it can have a positive impact in their life. When we're talking to those people at work that have never been in church, they've never, they've never darkened a church house door, and you share with them that, hey, God loves you, and you do it in, in the power of the Holy Spirit, it can have a positive impact in life. And here's the thing. When people can see Christ in us, when they can see what we're doing and the reason for which we're doing it, they're going to sit back and they are going to say to themselves, God has really done a work in that person's life. I think about when I was first saved, and, I, and, and, I've sh- and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail this morning, but I've shared with you that I was no angel prior to salvation. As a matter of fact, Nancy checked me for horns. I was no angel. But what I can tell you is I'm not who I used to be. I'm not the same person that I was. I don't have the same desires. I don't have the same interests. I'd like to tell you today that I'm absolutely perfect and I'm not there yet, but folks, one of these days I'm going to be. One of these days this corruptible is going to put on incorruption. This mortal is going to put on immortality. But what I'm telling you is I'm not the same person I used to be. And it is amazing that when you live it before your family and you live it before your friends and they see the change that is coming to their life, there's only one answer, one conclusion that they can come to, and that is that God has done a work in this man's life. And I'm telling you, folks, as the Apostle Paul said, Jesus Christ came to save sinners, and Paul said, of whom I am chief. Let your light shine. The love that you have experienced from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the change that the Heavenly Father has made in our life through the working of the Spirit of God in our life, Let that light shine forth. Let that love permeate through your life. Share it with those around about you. And when we do that, they'll see our good works, but the goal is for them to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Folks, God's desire for each and every one of us is to be a light to those around about us, to share with them God's love, God's purpose, God's direction and to share with them that there is hope in Jesus Christ. And I guess the question for us this morning is very simple. Is my light shining? The love that God has granted to me, the salvation that he has provided for me, 
Is that flowing through my life? And is it working in my life? And is it shining forth to those around about me? Is there some, some stains or some dirt on, on, the, on the globe that needs to be washed away and confessed so that light can shine clearly? Here's what I'm telling you. We are here to promote and to magnify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it comes through the life that we live. And I'm going to close with something, and I'm going to paraphrase it. But most of you are familiar with a man by the name of St. Francis of Assisi. When St. Francis of Assisi would send his people out to share the gospel message, the thing that he would tell them was, preach the gospel and use words when necessary. I want you to think about that. Can people tell by the life that we live and the things that we do that we belong to Jesus Christ? Can people look at our life and see that God has made a difference in our life? That He has transformed us and changed us and is working and making us into the image of His, Lord, of His Son, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? The greatest way to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, words are wonderful, but folks, if our life does not back up what we teach or what we preach, I guess the way to phrase it is, if we're not practicing what we preach, our message is not going to be received very well. The instruction of Jesus to the disciples that day, they are on the mountainside. Let your light shine. The change that Jesus Christ has made in your life. Shine it forth to those around about you. And let them see your good works, but glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And the question again, how's my light? Is it shining forth for his honor and glory? Am I making a difference? Do I have a positive impact in this world? The, in, the instruction is, let your light shine. I'm going to close with one more illustration, and it's a, it's a simple illustration. But it goes back to the idea, we, we live in a totally different day than the day that Jesus spent upon this earth, where they would light a lamp or they would light a candle. We have the privilege of flipping a switch and turning on the lights. And I would, I would say this, and I think you'll agree with me, light bulbs are pretty important, aren't they? We're kind of like a light bulb. As long as we're connected to the power source, we can shine forth for His honor and glory. But you unscrew that light bulb, and you set it over here by itself, that light bulb may be fine, it may be perfect, but if it is not connected to the power source, it will not give light. And that's what Jesus Christ is encouraging us to do. To let Him be the power in our life. To let the Holy Spirit of God work through us so that we can radiate and shine forth the light of God in a, in, in a dark world. But in order to do that, we must be connected to the power source. And that power source is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How's your life this morning? Are you sharing and shining forth the love of God to those around about you? Is the glass on your, on your lamp filthy and dirty where it's hindering the light? Our purpose is to let our light shine for His honor and for His glory. I'm going to ask you to stand, if you would, please, with heads bowed.